Hey everybody, welcome back to Tiny Garage Fabrication. This week, I'm either going to make it or break it. Alright, well thanks for tuning in. Um, if you like what you're about to see on this channel, please uh, give me a comment, give me a like, subscribe if you would, that would be great. Anyway, uh, if you don't know what I'm working on, it's a 1950 Ford F1. Uh, this has a whole bunch of custom stuff done to it. Um, I went over that in another video. I'll drop the link below. Uh, it kind of gives you gives you a rundown of all the stuff I've done to it. <clears throat> but today, actually this whole weekend, uh, I do these videos on the weekends. Try to upload them in the middle of the week. That way it gives me time to uh, you know do the regular job and the family life stuff. So, trying to get the interior all finished up this weekend. And here's some of the stuff I have to do. So I'm going to go back through the wiring. Uh, most of the wiring is good. This main harness is all the stuff that's going to go up to the dash. I want to change out some of these wires. Um, I screwed up and I got interior wiring for like houses and stuff. That's just not going to fly in the truck. So I'm going to go get more wires because I have to extend those because the harness only goes to about here and it was going to run up that way. Anyway, about that, I don't like the way it puffs up the carpet. This harness is just, it's, it's too damn thick to run under there nicely. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to run it back, have it go out this hole right here. <clears throat> it's going to run underneath the cab under the frame rail and then I'm going to drill a hole right above here. This is where the steering column comes through from this hole. I'm going to drill a hole right there and it'll go straight up between my clutch and brake pedals and it'll be able to run up the support bars that I built that go right along here and it'll spread out to the dash. So I think it'll be a lot cleaner. It should be a lot easier to maintain in the future. And we'll uh, get started on that. Minute. Also going to try to get the dash all put together. My gauges, you guys are really going to like what I got for gauges. Pretty awesome setup. And, uh, you know, try to do as much as we can and get the window regulators and all that stuff in. And with that, window regulators, I ordered glass for this truck. Um, the front windshield was broken when I got it. The rear windshield, or the rear window was in there. It was in decent shape, but not great shape. Uh, so I took it out, I ordered new windows, my vent windows were completely garbage, and they're super expensive to rebuild, so I got a one-piece side window kit. And being how these windows, uh, it's a good shape for a one-piece window. So I ordered stuff over a month ago, I finally got it in the mail this week, and here's kind of what I got. <clears throat> big window channels, this one got a little bit damaged in shipping, shouldn't be that big of a deal, it's thin, it's stainless, I'll be able to bend it back. But I got a window... And with it, don't know if you can see that, but it's even got the old FOMOCO stamp in it. Pretty cool. The new rear window is with this, and then here's my side windows, as well as all of the channel structures and supports, and some really awesome instructions on how to install the one-piece glass. I got this from ClassicTruckGlass.com. Price was okay. Shipping was as could be expected from California to here for a couple of boxes of fragile stuff. But enough about all of that stuff. Let's uh, let's get to work. All right, so I've been working on the 50 truck here. Uh, I got all the glass in. Uh, I still have some some uh, finishing touches to do on the doors. They were a serious pain in the butt. You know, you pay a bunch of money for a product. You hope it's going to be really good. It's okay. Um, a lot of modifications are needed. The instructions were hard to follow. There was a step in the end that should have been towards the front. Um, you know, just. It's the way it goes, man. Old trucks, old stuff. It, it just happens. And, like I said at the beginning of every episode, are you going to make it or break it? Well, today, I finally broke something. I don't really know how well you can see that, but there it is. Right in here. Um, totally shattered the glass. So, there we go. Yep, was uh, trying to get the seal in, and it just wasn't quite going in, so I pried up from the bottom a little bit. I pried right there, obviously too hard, and boom, broke the glass. Um, come to find out, it's probably because we didn't have enough lubricant. As we were pulling the rope out, it also uh, shredded this gasket, so I need a new gasket. need a new back glass. I have the stock back glass for this. It's still in one piece. Might put it in. I don't know. We'll see, uh, see the availability of new glass. So at the doors, some of that fitment, this is as far as it's rolling down right now. I have to do a little bit more. There is a uh, 
there's a channel in the front here and basically the channel goes uh, let's see if I can show this it goes from right here all the way down there's a bracket that holds it right there and it goes to about this level and it goes at kind of an angle to match the rear one well it's too far towards the back of the door so basically what happens is when the window starts getting down here it gets pinched and um, it can't go down any farther so I have to keep fiddling with that bracket and trying to move it forward forward that way it can go up and down um, <clears throat> so need to find my other window cranks but window goes up sits in the channel pretty well that spot where it was messed up from shipping still a little messed up it's just kind of it's just not perfect looking I'm not totally happy with it but the window goes up seems to look pretty good window comes back down without much drama it just it just stops right there but I'll get that figured out front windshield man this thing went in like no kidding 45 seconds in and done thing went great we used plenty of lube um, everything's good to go now that gasket does cover not everything but you know I painted this surround black so it, it, it gave it a nice look uh, everything I wanted it to do it did but that glass is all in pretty good it's even got the little little FOMO co on it kinda hard to see there we go and driver's side door I'm still working on sorting out some of the uh, some of the stuff there's part of that channel you can see I have the L bracket out right now because I have to bend it anyway it needs to go towards the front of the door more it's pushed back a little bit pinching the window and not letting it come down so some minor fitments Put the glass is in once all the uh, windows are rolled back up I'm gonna move along to something else all right just have to put this in there real quick um sorry I didn't record any of putting the uh, the glass in it's pretty easy uh, the way the front and the back glass goes in is just there's you use a rope in the uh, gasket similar to the way you can do on old Volkswagen bugs really any old truck plenty of videos on YouTube about that the reason I didn't record is that uh, my lovely wife helped me out but she's a whole lot camera shy um, she don't want me to record anything with uh, any possibility of her being in it so respect her wishes you know good dude that I am so I didn't record any of it anyway the product is what you'll see thanks for understanding stuff done I'm finally happy with how the wiring is coming along uh, let me show you that real quick I'll show you what I'm working on and then we'll get uh, we'll get to some progress here so I got the main cable goes through the floor it goes underneath comes up and then it comes up just above the steering column and then she routes upwards and I have it all right here so I have drastically way too much wire, but I'd rather have too much than too little. I also got my steering column put in today. Uh, it should be in, shouldn't have to take it back out. 
Also started been working on the AccuAir. Saw the time lapse earlier and putting these little quick connects on. These are for the three positions as well as the dump valve. So you got you know your three presets and your dump in whichever order it is I ended up plugging them in. Uh, I thought I needed a main hot and a key source, but that was just for if the thing ran the remote. So this is gonna go straight to battery. So I've got these right here, I can run to something else. Uh, maybe the seat heaters or something like that. Anyway, I have a constant power and a switched power. I might just hide those under there for in case something pops up in the future. Uh, this harness I've been working on, I uh, just made all these. These gigantic bundle of wires is for the ride height sensors. There's four of them, so there's four sets of wires, one for each. Um, there's a shared ground, a shared power that goes to the four sets, and then signal back from each particular wire. Next, I'll be wiring up the solenoids. Luckily, there's enough wire left over here to get to where I'm going to mount them, which is basically right behind the cab on top of the frame. Here's my tank, here's my compressor, here are my solenoids. Um, it's going to be on a bracket that kind of holds the compressor like this, and the solenoids will be right about here. Anyway, this is a pretty cool little unit. This is the Slam Specialties SV8C. It is an all-in-one um, valve block for four corner air suspension. One single little unit, and it's small. It fits in the palm of my hand. So instead of running eight brass valves that take up a bunch of room and a bunch of wiring and crap everywhere, this is super clean. It's already got push to connect fittings. It has one single cable, and the other side to this cable, the side that plugs into it, has loose ends, which I'm going to connect to these wires here, and we'll have ourselves a wired up valve block. getting ready to solder this stuff um, had everything set up I usually solder with this little torch um, however it's uh, it's doing this um, usually shoots out a little flame this isn't very good for soldering I just filled it with it should be like that yeah it's not like that uh, I don't really know what's going on here I just filled it with butane and it's a fucking flamethrower I don't I don't get it so Gotta plug in the iron, do the soldering the old fashioned way. Damn. So the thought just occurred to me, this is a great opportunity to show you guys uh, how I solder stuff. So what we got to do is, um, well, first off, find what we're doing here. All right, here we go. So what I do when I do soldering is I strip the wires to about an inch, give or take. Uh, let me try to get in closer here. Alright, so I strip the wires to about an inch or so, and then I do a version of a Western Union splice. So you want to kind of make an X with them, and then what you'll do is you'll wrap them across each other longitudinally. So you can see I wrapped, ah, it's really hard to get a shot here. Anyway, I wrapped this wire down around this way. Now I'm going to run this wire goes this way. I'm going to wrap it around this side. And you want to go the same direction with both terminals. So I always... That way, when you're at the end, and if you give them a twist like that, it just continues to tighten them. So... This will sew up. So that's a 
version of the Western Union splice. Now the reason I do this is so that when I put my heat shrink on, I don't have any big, you know, folded over thing. It's roughly the same diameter as with the insulation on it. And so here's the, sh the soldering portion. Now I'm clipping these so close to this small wire because it's leaving kind of a little dent in these uh, in this insulation. It's not as robust as this other side is. So I'm clipping it over there so that when I slide my heat shrink over it, in case this little uh, clamp pokes any holes in it, I'll still be able to seal it. Now, <clears throat> I have a soldering iron. This is, uh, okay, I'm not sure how many watts this is. This is a 27 amp, 120 volt. So based on that, you should be able to figure out the wattage. Um, now, what I do is I take a little drop of my rosin core solder and I put it on the tip just to get a nice silvery spot. Now what this does is not so much to solder the wire, but what that does is it cleans the tip. It gives you a good surface for good heat transfer. And then I sit there with the, uh, the thing on it and I put the solder on the wire. Now you don't put the solder on the gun or the uh, iron. And you can see it kind of balls up there. It's not quite ready to move around yet. You can sit and watch it and eventually that little bubble will just kind of flow. It'll kind of liquidize and, and fall into the wires, which it just did. So now I know. Now it's not quite hot enough on the end, but did you see that? Not sure if it focused enough, but it just kind of pulled itself into the into the wires. And that's when you know you got a good joint, is when you don't just have a bunch of bubble gum sitting up top. So you got to get it hot enough so that the solder gets in between all the wires. Towards the end I just kind of run it across, and there we go. That is a soldered connection. So, like I said, it's a uh, modified Western Union, but the overall diameter doesn't increase to much more than the insulation started with. So it's good, it's solid, and when it's time to heat shrink, I'll grab one of these cooler ones. When it's time to run your heat shrink, it just glides right over. It's not big, it's not obtrusive. Um, super easy joint to do, just takes a little bit of time, more patience than practice. So, hope that helped out somebody at least. Alright, it's time to run through, uh, <clears throat> some stuff I've gotten done on the wiring. I'll take a quick look at that, see that I've made some progress. So here you can see some of the stuff for the dash. I've got everything kind of grouped up into uh, what it needs to be and roughly where it goes. So this will be for the seat heaters. I found a use for the oil pressure and water temp sender cables that were in the engine compartment that I didn't use. I sent them back in to the cab. These are going to be power for driver and passenger seats because that wiring actually runs down and ends up right there under the seats already. So it's convenient, it keeps me from having to run extra wires and stuff that would have just gotten clipped out. These are wires for the radio, constant and switched. Uh, I'm not actually going to have a radio, but I'm gonna keep these in the dash in case somebody wants to put a radio in. This will be for the 12 volt socket. This is for the dome light. Here's for the HVAC controls, ignition stuff. I've got the Cat 5 for the gauges. Uh, got my light stuff and my windshield wiper here. Steering columns in. I have already connected all of the turn signal things they're in and, and connected. So, as you can tell, super clean install. Um, never mind these wires, but looking in there like you're not going to see hardly anything under the dash, almost nothing on the firewall. Super clean. The AccuAir is super clean. That right there will get cleaned up a lot once the final tray is in. And I believe that's it for the wiring for now. Just a little bit more to go. I just have to terminate all the ends on those and, and shorten the cables to the appropriate length. But I'm almost done with that. Well, that just about wraps it up. It's a, been another seriously long weekend. It doesn't look like I've gotten much accomplished. Um, I almost don't feel like I got much accomplished, but a lot of things got done. This wiring stuff takes so much time, especially when you need to extend wires and you want to extend them correctly. Uh, you know, solder, heat shrink, stuff like that. It, it takes a lot of time. A lot of planning to know where everything goes. 
and it's just you know it's part of the build process um, especially when you want to start wiring something from scratch adding the things that you want added and getting it ran the way so that it's the cleanest most unobtrusive way possible I know not a whole lot of fabrication got done this week uh, but there will be plenty more in the future so you know, I uh, gave some tips on soldering, showed you some stuff that you can do for uh, routing wires and so on and so forth. I've had a lot of fun this week. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please subscribe if you like what you see, and if you want to see more cool stuff in the future. Uh, many more projects on the books, sitting in the driveway, in my storage unit. Trust me, there is no shortage of things to build. So, everything's going to have a cool little twist on it, and uh, I hope that you subscribe. I hope you like these videos. I hope you comment and let's have a conversation, but let's always keep building stuff. See you next time.